Oh, hey guys. Uh, yeah, come on in. I wanted to show you this uh, new pocket hole jig that I picked up from Harbor Freight. It's made by Drillmaster. Uh, it's called the Portable, Portable Pocket Hole Jig Kit. Uh, item number 96264. So far, I've been really impressed with this thing. I've only had it a few days, but I've really been uh, making quite a few pocket holes, and I'm really excited about this because uh, for guys like me that don't have a whole ton of woodworking equipment and clamps and stuff like that, I do have some clamps, but I don't have a ton of that kind of stuff because most of my work is geared toward metalworking and stuff like that. And until probably the past two or three years, I was kind of really hesitant to do a lot of woodworking because my woodworking experiences had kind of been uh, marginal at best and just you know because of the tools that I had and because of the of, you know not only that the abilities or my inability to do a lot of the stuff because I just never done it before so uh, as I've learned a lot of stuff I've gotten more confident in my woodworking and therefore you know I need more and more tools to complete the tasks that I need to do one of the tasks that I've got coming up is I've got to build up some cabinets a whole bunch of cabinets I've got to build cabinets for the off-grid homestead and that means uh, basically all the cabinetry, all the kitchen cabinetry. I've got a big island to build, so I've got a ton of cabinets to put together. Uh, my wife and I, we went up and looked at some different cabinet makers, uh, mostly on the cheaper end, I'll, I'll, I'll admit. We went over to Lowe's and Home Depot and looked around there, and a lot of their stuff, the entry-level cabinets that they sell are particle board. They're just very thin. They're not, they're not going to be good for the long haul. So I wanted to make something that was a little more substantial out of some, you know, three quarter inch plywood, you know, cabinet grade plywood. And I needed a way to join that. There are several different ways to do that, but I've chosen pocket holes. So first up, you'll see uh, that it comes with this little quick clamp on there. Uh, pretty straightforward. It's a cam lock type mechanism so that uh, when you put your board in there, uh, once you adjust this little guy, you can adjust it all the way down to, I think the minimum size you're going to be able to put pocket holes in is about half inch. Uh, but you could adjust this the right to the right throw where it's got enough pressure on it. And once it's got a little lock on it and a little pressure on it like that, you can lock this into your vise and proceed to drill your pocket holes uh, through these holes. Now, uh, one thing you want to look for or be, you know, pay attention to as you're doing this is... On this side here, you see these two different angles. You can go down this way, and that's gonna be for half inch through one inch material. So if you're doing a half inch board or one inch board anywhere in between there, you're gonna to wanna to use this angle. If you're doing two by fours like we have in here now, which is truly an inch and a half wide, it's gonna be the inch and a quarter through inch and a half at this angle, or larger. Now, I don't know what the maximum capacity is. I haven't didn't really buy it for that, uh, but definitely two by material. Uh, I'm thinking the way that this thing screws, that's probably about as thick as you're going to be able to see there. You can only go just slightly larger than a two by four. Hopefully you're seeing that gap in there and use this cam lock thing here. So if you needed to make pocket holes in something thicker than a two by four, there is a way to do that. Uh, I was really impressed by this that uh, right now I have mine screwed on here. Uh, this little side plate, you can take this off and use these independently where it's it's more like a traditional handheld one. Uh, but before we do that, let me show you some of the features here. Uh, now I just, I made this up yesterday. I used pocket holes uh, to connect this on here to give me a nice firm support. This mounts down in my vise and I clamp down on it. And I thought, you know, I need a place to put my bit where it won't get damaged. So I used one of the neodymium magnets or rare earth magnets and I glued that in there. And I just cut a hole in the 2x4 so that slides in and locks into place. And these are my Allen wrenches here. I just drilled a hole where those just kind of friction fit in there. Uh, I was going to put uh, neodymium magnets underneath them. And if they start falling out, I will do that. But for now, they're fine. And that's just a neat little way to hold all your stuff. And over here, uh, you have to keep these two, these two bolts here so that you can use this piece. Uh, so I just drilled the hole slightly smaller than the thread size in the board and I just threaded them straight in there worked fine uh, so as I said I made this uh, like as such so that I could clamp this down in a vise and lock it in now it's nice and rigid it's not going anywhere I can make my pocket holes uh, what we're going to do I've just got some scrap boards here uh, one thing that's important is you need to make sure that you're square and flat on these edges or else, you know, it's not going to lock in great. I can tell this one's not perfectly square. It's just a scrap that I cut off here. I'll try this end here. 
So the idea is you put it in like so, you adjust your knob here until it's the proper tension, and you don't want to go crazy on that. You don't want to put a whole bunch of tension on it because I'm sure this mechanism won't be able to hold up to it. This body is aluminum. That's also another factor. So as you're pressing this cam lock, I can see it flexing here a little bit. Before we go too far with this, I've got to show you this little collar here. As you can see, there's a set screw that comes with it. Uh, you have to set this little collar. This is your depth stop. So let me move this board out of the way and I'll show you. Let's see if you guys can see this at this angle. I'm going to slide this in. Uh, what you want to do is get it pretty darn close to the, to the surface here, but not to where it's going to penetrate the surface. I've seen some people take a nickel or a penny or something and stick it underneath there. And if you're not very comfortable with it, I suggest you do that. Uh, I can just eyeball it and see that I'm not going to drill through uh, down here because you don't want to make novice marks on there. But if I was a little nervous about it, basically all you do is take your Allen wrench and just slide it down a little more until you've got the clearance that you want. And that looks about perfect. So, you know, you want like a, I don't know, a 16th inch of clearance or something like that. You can run it as close as you dare, but, you know, personally, I don't want to run my drill bit down into the uh, aluminum for, because it'll dull the bit and it just kind of makes you look like an amateur. So don't do that. But you can see this is the angle we're going to use for the 2x4. So now we're set up. We've got this locked in. Uh, one other thing I suggest is just dab a little 3-in-1 oil or something on here uh, before you use this. And so that it lubricates this. And another thing to consider when you're going down to start your drilling, you don't have to, I've seen guys start the motor way up here. You don't want to do that. Get the thing all the way down in the hole first to where it's almost in contact with the wood and then start your drill. That way you're not dulling up your drill bit here or opening up this collar. You want this collar tolerance to stay nice and tight. You've got a scale back here, uh, a measuring scale, and it's marked zero in the center, and it goes out from there. It looks like it goes to about one and a quarter, one and a half is as far out as you can go. But the idea before you lock it in, you can move this in and out and put your pocket holes wherever you want. It's quick, it's easy. Because this thing is made overseas out of probably inferior materials, especially the screw thread of this knob right here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to uh, put the Hercules on this. You don't need to. Just snug it up good and snug so that these aren't going to move around. So let's get the drill bit installed. I find running my drill here on high speed works the best, although you don't have to run it full speed. Only run it as fast as you need to. So we've got our drill bit, collar set. We're going to get this right in the middle, locked down. Make sure to go through the appropriate holes. Put the bit all the way down in there until it touches, and then just back up like just a hair so that you can get it started. And here we go. Might pull back on it a little and let some of the wood, chi wood chips come out of there. There we go. All the way to the collar. Stop. Release your bit, same here. Now, let's take a look at the pocket hole. I unscrewed that, I didn't need to. I meant to do this, I was just talking to you guys and not thinking here. Okay, so, man, that looks really good. You're gonna have that all of them do that. The Craigs, every, every kit I've ever used, it chips out a little bit right there, but that looks really clean. Uh, the holes down in there are nice and flat. So the idea with these pocket holes, as you may know or may not, is that now you can do a butt joint and connect that. And if you think about it, as you're putting things together, you can always hide these by putting them on the opposite side from from where people are going to see it so if it's on a cabinet you'd put it on like the back side where no one will see that on the interior so there's ways to do this the only time that you really couldn't do that and hide them is like on the back of a cabinet door or something but they actually make plugs that you can slide in there and cut off and so 
there are ways around that. Although on cabinet doors, I prefer to just uh, clamp them and glue them together and just not have any pocket holes in there unless I have to. So anyhow, guys, that's a pretty good system. Uh, you basically, uh, one other thing you need to make sure you, you do when you're doing pocket holes is that, you know, you can put it anywhere you want. If you want it right in the middle of the board like that, that's totally fine. But you're going to need to clamp this all together before you start running your screws down in there. Because if you don't, this board will, will walk and move around on you. So you need to get them clamped in nice and securely. And if you're going to glue, do all that, clamp it in, then run your pocket hole screws down in there nice and tight. And you'll need a nice long drill bit uh, to make this work. Uh, you'll have to also, we're, while we're speaking about this, you'll have to use the Craig style uh, flat head on the bottom screws. And I'll show you a close up of the ones that came with this drill master kit. Uh, they're in Phillips head. Many times the Craig ones are in a square drive head. So just be aware of that. Make sure you have the right drill bits and get the right length screws and stuff like that. And it's fairly easy to figure out what the right length screw is by simply running a screw down in here. So. I could run a screw straight down in there and whatever is sticking out, you can kind of hold it up to the board that you're going to attach to and see how deep you're getting and, you know, adjust your screw size or length accordingly. Uh, one thing that I haven't quite been able to figure out yet is what these two little extra Allen screws are for. They come in the bag and they're real tiny. I see where they fit. They fit right here. And I don't really understand, unless you would want to change the angle or something, or maybe there's a way, maybe you would put in a, like a piece of uh, thin material, such as uh, some Lexan or something like that. There may be a reason to do that that I'm just not thinking of. And then you could screw that on there with those. But I'm not quite sure. But this is how you just undo the knob there and those slide right off. No problem. Uh, fit and finish on this thing is really nice. I am really impressed with it. Let me go ahead and pull this out and I'll show you what I was talking about earlier. What you do here is you pull these guys off. It's pretty straightforward. There are some numbers on here and you'll see there's only one fixed hole here and a slotted hole. So you could put, you could locate one of these guys like this in that fixed hole, or you can put them both in the slotted hole. It's your choice. But if you want to use the measuring scale on the front here, then you would want to put it on this zero block here. And hopefully you're seeing how that kind of locks in there. There's a lip right there that, that catches that. So we're going to run these screws in. And again, we're going into an aluminum body, so don't reef down on them too hard. You want to just snug them up good. About all you need. Right there. Okay. Next, slide this one off. Slide it on here. Align your slot down below, thread it in, and now hopefully you're seeing the adjustment scale here, where if I want to set this at one inch, let's say, I could line this up at one inch right there and lock it down. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to set it a little wider here because we're working on two by fours. Now that you have it configured like this, it enables you to put a traditional, you know, like a uh, C-clamp type deal on here. You can clamp that down, any kind of clamp that'll, that'll wrap around that. But now you could do this in the middle of a board somewhere. If you needed to make a pocket hole in something that was in a weird place, or, or maybe you, like earlier, I was saying you're limited here to only two by material. So one and a half thickness. So let's say you were trying to put some pocket holes in a four by four square post or something. Well, you could do that with this. Uh, you just have to, you know, configure the system like this and then clamp it down, put your pocket holes in, and then hopefully that's making sense to you guys. That's a pretty clever little deal, and I wasn't expecting to get that in the kit. So anyways, guys, I am really happy with this thing. I want to pull you over here and show you just kind of some of the other stuff that comes along with it, the screws, stuff like that. But I highly recommend this product, and hopefully these little tips that I've shared with you uh, will help you out if you uh, are on the fence about buying one of these. I say go ahead and do it. Now here are some of the provided screws that you get with the Harbor Freight Kit. Uh, comes with four bags of different size assorted screws here. Uh, two bags of the long screws. I don't know, these are the same size here. This is the only longer one. Looks like those are about inch and a quarter, inch and a half maybe. 
So you get four bags just to get you started, some smaller ones for thinner stuff, thinner material. Uh, but we've got everything clamped in here, so I want to show you guys kind of how you finish it off in case you don't know. I mean, most people probably do know how a pocket hole works, but you never know. There's probably a few out there that have never seen this before. So uh, the idea is you get everything clamped together, you get your pocket holes cut. I'm using an impact driver here. You could use a drill if you wanted, but... Go all the way in uh, until it stops. And I'm, in my case, it's gonna click because it's an impact driver. Now, one thing I will say about these Harbor Freight screws, they seem pretty soft. So I've noticed that my bit slips quite a bit on them where normally it wouldn't do that. I was able to get it tight enough in there uh, I would recommend the Craig screws though. They're a higher quality. Uh, there are some other ones you can get like this, but basically the idea is they have to be flat on the bottom like that. You can't use a tapered screw like a sheetrock screw because it'll split this. It'll, it won't be strong like it is now. The whole reason this works is because it's going down a flat against a flat. So let's undo it here and take a look. Now clearly I wasn't trying to do any fine woodworking here, but the idea is we've made a nice strong butt joint there that if I added a little glue and a third screw back here on the back side uh, this thing is bulletproof man I mean it's going to be plenty strong enough to do anything that you're needing to do so guys I highly recommend this kit totally worth the money can't express it enough appreciate you tuning in to the hands-on channel and your continued support if you don't mind hit the thumbs up down below if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button